Hello! So today I'm going to be going over my most recent lightsaber build. This is actually for Austin, who's bought two lightsabers before this, and this is going to be his third one from me. So I wanted to thank you, Austin, for being a return customer and enjoying my work. So let's get right into it. This is the MW3 by KR Sabers. It's actually the same hilt as the Corbanth one, made by the same person, except the the uh, the Saber Armory one comes in a much cooler box. As you can see, it's got that standard blueprint-esque on black look, which is very nice. And inside, it comes with all these pieces. You've got the hilt itself, you've got the blade retention emitter, the one with three retention screws on it. You replace the blade plug with this, and then you can hold the blade in place. You've got the KR Sabers Saber Armory. Um, the new version, from what I can tell, because I've compared it to my previous one, this is the Challenge Coin. It's got a little bit, little bit more depth than the previous one. Nice black, a little bit more raised, I believe. I like this one quite a lot. It's, it's very nice. And it's, it, you've got the, uh, the Allen wrench in here as well for the blade retention. And then you have the longer grip, which I believe is a little more accurate to the, um, to the prop and the Master Replica version. Since you asked me to put on the short grips, they are on the hilt already, and I do think I prefer the short grips. It's much nicer to hold, so hopefully you'll enjoy that. If you don't, you can always replace it with the longer grips. So, let's have a look here. This is the blade plug. I'll be wiping off the chrome, polishing it up a little bit before I send it to you. So, it can come apart here. This is the blade plug. This entire top section comes off, and you can replace it with the blade retention emitter. You also have this section here that unscrews. You don't need to unscrew this part ever, but it can if you want. You can see the NeoPixel connector, the stock V3. And then this pommel section unscrews. If this ever gets loose, it hasn't gotten loose on this hilt before, but if it ever does, you can just open it up. Oh, okay, wow, I'm gonna grease that one. I greased a couple of the other threads here, but I've never undone this one, but uh, oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm definitely greasing that up before I send it to you. My goodness, all right. But anyways, if you look inside, you've got an Allen key thing in there. Just stick it in, tighten it, and there you go, you're all set. I believe this part comes off as well. There you go. So this end, end cap also comes off so you can have access to it easier. Just tighten this, then tighten it. Won't, won't be loose at all. Put this on, put on the pommel. I'll grease it up later. And then this part I greased up last, which is very, very nice. As you can, as you can hear, it's much nicer. There we go. And then here is my new design for the chassis. You just slide it straight out, super easy. It gets held in place by um, the length, so the pommel actually presses against the, the chassis. So it, it just sort of holds it in place inside the hilt. So it doesn't need any kind of retention or anything like that, which is quite nice. You have the soundboard. I have a shelving system right here. So if you ever do need to take it out for any reason, you just slide it that way, pull it out, put it in, slide it back in. That way you don't need any tape or glue to hold it in place. It just has these little shelves that I, that I made has quite a lot of wires because of all the different features in here because it has Bluetooth, the OLED display, along with all the standard stuff, and uh, the individually wired NeoPixel connector, the blade detection, so all those add a lot of wires to this. So that's why there's quite a lot, quite a lot stuffed in there. Got the button PCB that comes with this, this hilt. Sorry about the lack of focus, the new camera takes a little bit of time to focus with how I set it up. NeoPixel connector. There we go. That's pretty much it. You should know from the previous build that uh, all the SD card contents are on here. You can use the micro USB port for um, updating firmware and stuff, but you never really need to do that or accessing RISC. But we have the Bluetooth here, so you don't really need to do it. So I'll just leave it at that. Um, now I'll just show you how the lightsaber works. Works pretty much like the other lightsabers, but if you put the chassis in... Well, actually, let me show you the rest of the design. So I changed the wording to, to um, 
you know, Arabesh or whatever. So it's, that it says um, Mace Windu, like MW3 OLED CFX. So it basically says what this is for, which hilt, what features, and then it also has Avery's workshop on the side, so it knows that I made the, the chassis. I also added these cool little little rings at the top. You'll see it better in person because the lighting's not great here. But you put it in by lining up the buttons with the middle button here. And just slide it in. Really easy. And then the battery I'll be sending with you as well. I'll be sending it to you. There we go. And then you just put in the negative side to the spring, positive side to the positive tab. That way it can fit underneath this little lip. Got the OLED display here. You can cycle through by pressing the auxiliary button. It does have force activation. Let me just grab a magnetic ring for that. Hopefully you have one for your previous lightsabers because I believe both of them have the same thing. All right, force activation, wherever it is. There it is, yeah, right above the board, which is right there. All right, it's pretty loud. I think I still have it at 75% volume or 60% volume. It's somewhere around there. Um, it's 24 millimeter base speaker because that's all that can fit in here. That's the maximum size that'll fit. And then, what else? I think you know pretty much everything else with CFX and the OLED display since I have made two of the exact same ones for you. So you just close it up, unscrew the top. Well, I'll just turn it on. The blade plug's really cool because it shines through all the little holes here. So you just unscrew the blade plug, and then we'll put in the um, blade retention emitter here. This takes a 7 8 inch blade. I like using the KR pixel stick ones, pixel strip ones. So with this, it can be a little bit of a loose fit sometimes, so it might create a green little spark thing that just means that the, the the data line doesn't connect completely so it gets confused so just when you put it in make sure you put it in nice and snug there you go no green spark at all and then you can just turn it on it has all the standard fonts about 30 of them and the blade profiles and colors that i've set up for the previous sabers as well and then you can just tighten the retention screws on the side if you can see, we've got one here that you can just tighten, this one, and then this one. There you go. So the top is the activation, bottom is auxiliary. You have twist activation. I think you also have stab activation, I just don't remember if I set it up or not. You may not have it on here, but you can always set it up in the settings. And as always, in the description, I'll have all the customization things that you can check out to help you with the customization. Um, does it have flick on? I don't know. But definitely twist on and twist off, because those are the coolest ones in my opinion. And then I believe I also have the tip drag set up. Again, it's always kind of tricky to pull off. All right, well, I can't pull it off right now, but it's you put it at around 45 degree angle, then you clash and auxiliary at the same time. It's hard because I'm sitting down on the floor. Um, but you've got the color change. Then you can shift to the different colors. There we go. So we'll just choose this one for now, sort of a lime green. Looks really yellow on camera, actually. And then you can shift through the 
Sound, Sound song. Aux auxiliary press once goes forward. Uh, activation goes backwards. You go. You can skip forward by pressing both at the same time. Sometimes you gotta wait for the um, for the font sound to be done before you can turn it on. Sound bank selection. Red. But yeah, all these are are the same ones that are on the the Obi Wan one that you have, the O W K one. So I don't think I really need to go over all the different different ones here. Um, anything else to keep in mind about this is very, very easy to get fingerprints on here since it is chrome. Uh, the blade connection, don't worry if it does the green thing, just make sure you push it in all the way and securely when you do put, put the blade in. If it ever freezes, because um, blade detection tends to confuse the board sometimes, but if it ever freezes, you can just take out the battery, put it back in, fixes it right up. So, all you really have to keep in mind about this is put the blade in snugly, just push it all the way in, and then hold it there while you tighten it, and then that tends to work the best. Um, negative, this way. You can pull out the board, keep the, keep the little tray for the buttons in line with the main button here. Top is activation, bottom is auxiliary. And yeah, all the standard controls for CFX. 7 8 inch blade. And yeah, that should be all. It's a pretty short video, pretty simple lightsaber. If you have any issues, just let me know. And as always, you can just check the description for any anything I may have missed in the video, because I tend to put that in the description. Uh, but I don't think I missed anything. Oh. You know what? I did miss something. I missed a big thing. It's Bluetooth. I'll show that to you real quick. As you know, sometimes uh, you have to go to the Force Sync app first before you, so you can find it. And of course, I'm not going to find it because it's not powered on. It doesn't have a battery in it. But sometimes you have to go to the Force Sync app first in order for your phone to be able to find the Bluetooth in the first place. And then you can just close out of that and then go into the Crystal FX app which is the CFX one. And it'll ask you for a code when you first do it, which is six zeros like usual. Turns off. Turns on. Turns on, turns off, and then you can go to Crystal Focus. Crystal FX app. This is where you update the firmware. I already did that for you, so it's updated to um, pretty much one of the mo most recent firmware updates. And then you have all the other controls. You've got the blade profiles that you can go through. You can change your configuration, your sound. Uh, volume at the moment looks to be set at 75%. Yeah, 75%. You can change that how you wish. You could cycle through all the different effects and then going forward and backward on the different fonts. So. Yeah, that's pretty much all you should keep in mind. And I'll reiterate, if you have any questions, just let me know. Look in the description if I left anything out and just for a reminder of things. And I'm also going to be leaving all the customization things in there as well so that you can customize it however you wish. So hope you enjoy it. This will be shipping out soon. And thanks for being a returning customer. May the force be with you. May the force be with you. There you go. <laughs>